Well, how's everybody doing this lovely Sunday morning? I hope everybody is just doing fine. I hope that God has showed you so many blessings this week that you know you serve a mighty God and you serve a grateful God who look out for his children. For those that believe in Jesus Christ, I need you to know today that you are blessed beyond measures and you ought to be saying thank you Jesus for what you already done. Thank you Jesus that I can get these blessings in my life today. Thank you Jesus that I am a new person in you. You ought to tell God thank you for sending your son. Thank you for sending a spirit to go inside of the woman named Mary and be the son Jesus was birthed that I can now not live in sin anymore. But he died on the cross and shed his blood for your forgiveness of sin. Do you believe in the blood shed of Jesus Christ? Because his blood will cleanse you. His blood will make you whole. You understand? For the forgiveness of sin. Understand that? Did you hear? For the forgiveness of sin. And then he was raised again to be at the right hand of the Father. And when he got to the right hand of the Father, he requests that the Father send his Holy Spirit down and let his Spirit live in you. For you that believe in Jesus Christ, I want you to know that you have the Holy Spirit in you. And because you follow Jesus, you are a new creation by the power of the Spirit that now dwell in you because you have a new nature in the name of Jesus. And you ought to be saying, thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice you made for me. I am glad that you made that sacrifice for me. And because of you, I have a new mindset now. I am no more no good, but I am very good in you. And because of you, Jesus, I am saved, delivered, best, blessed, and approved by your Father, who is now my Father through adoption. And I can say thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. And I can say thank you, God, for making a sacrifice with your Son. While we are yet sinners, you allowed your Son to die for us so that we can have a new life. That shows a forgiving God. That shows a God that works out of forgiveness. You understand? Uh, and he got a son that works out of forgiveness. See, his son died on the cross in order to forgive you for sins. And God, and God sacrificed his son so that he can give, forgive you for sin. So you got to understand that we have a God that works out of forgiveness that works out of forgiveness. And as us being a believer in Jesus Christ, understand this, as us being a believer in Jesus Christ, we should supposed to work out of forgiveness too, according to the word of God. We are supposed to forgive people that do wrong to us in the name of Jesus. We ain't supposed to sit back and hold grudges and things like that. We are supposed to be able to release them for the wrong that they have done to us in the name of Jesus. I know Know the day that you have a forgiving heart because you got Jesus in your life and when you got Jesus in your life that means you got Jesus in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, that means you got God in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit so if that's the case then first thing you need to realize is that you have a forgiving heart so you have a forgiving heart so yeah that's what you got to know that you have a forgiving giving heart today. Today I want you to know that you have a forgiving heart. Sometimes you don't see it, sometimes you don't realize it, but today I'm going to open you up to let you know that you have a forgiving heart, but today I'm going to show you how to develop that forgiving heart that you receive from Jesus Christ, that you receive from God, that you receive through the power of the Holy Spirit, and that you receive from God's Word with your spirit. So today our title of this match is How to Develop a Forgiving Heart. How to Develop a Forgiving Heart. But before I get into the matches, I want to give you the definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is to release someone from the wrong they done to you. To release someone from the wrong they have done to you. That means whatever wrong they done to you, you don't hold it against them anymore. You let it go. In the name of Jesus, you let it go. 
But I know that you can't do it by yourself. That's why we got Jesus. And that's why we got the Holy Spirit. Because we got to learn how to develop that forgiving heart that we already have in the name of Jesus. But forgiveness also deal with to release you from anger, bitterness, grudge, etc. From evil reactions. So when you truthfully learn how to be, so when you truthfully learn how to live out the forgiving heart that you get from Jesus Christ, understand me. When you really learn how to do that, and then when you learn how to release that and really release someone, then you ain't got to worry about being angry. You ain't got to worry about trying to revenge nobody. You ain't got to worry about bitterness. You ain't got to worry about grudging. You ain't got to worry about none of that because none of that will take place in your life. And you don't have to be worried about reacting evil when you got a forgiving heart. See, when you got a forgiving heart, it helps you overcome evil Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're good. So do you want to have a forgiving heart or do you still want to have a vengeful heart, a hateful heart, a bitter heart, or a good heart? See, I prefer to have a good heart. That's why I learned to develop a forgiving heart through the power of the Holy Spirit and God's word through prayer and meditation, through the seeking and helping of God and Jesus in order for me to have this forgiving heart that I have now because I never always had a forgiving heart. I had a vengeful heart. Maybe you hit me, I'm finna hit you back. You do wrong to me, I'm finna do wrong back to you. I ain't finna hold you up. Evil for evil was the game back then. But I thank God that he delivered me from evil to evil to overcoming evil with good. So now I can say I forgive get you and I can walk away with it and forget about it. It don't hold me down no more. It don't have me walking around with anger no more. It don't have me walking around with resentment and bitterness no more. I can walk around with joy and peace because I learned how to develop a forgiving heart through the word of God in the name of Jesus. So as I go through this message today, I hope it helped you develop a forgiving heart or, or, it help, or I hope it helped Help you to work on developing a forgiving heart uh, because you need it in the name of Jesus. You want the blessings that God got for you, you need a forgiving heart. You want the joy that God for you and the peace that God got for you, you need a forgiving heart. See, the world works out of an unforgiving heart, but Christians work out a forgiving heart. You got to understand, you got to separate yourself from the world and put yourself in God's world and in Jesus' world. You can't deal with this physical world. You got to get with the true world. You can't deal with this evil world. You got to get with the holy world. And the holy world come through Jesus Christ. And when you're working out of Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. You're going to have a forgiving heart in the name of Jesus. So you're blessed beyond magic. When you can have a forgiving heart, you bless beyond margin. See, in order to develop your forgiving heart, first you need to know and believe that God has already gave you a forgiving heart by his son, Jesus Christ. By his son, Jesus Christ. So the first step to develop a forgiving heart is that you got to believe that you already got one. You got to start believing that you already have a forgiving heart. You got to start believing that God had already given you a giving a, a forgiving heart through his son, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. You have it in the name of Jesus. I know you have it because I have it and I know it came through Jesus. I know it came through believing in Jesus. I know it came through living by God's word. But I have a forgiving heart today. I know this and you need to know that you have one so you can start operating out of that forgiving heart that you have in the name of Jesus. So otherwise, I say you must build on the forgiving heart God has already given you. So if you build on it, you are working on developing a forgiving heart. You are working on developing a forgiving heart. So let's work on it in the name of Jesus. When you find yourself don't want to forgive somebody, work on forgiving them anyway. And then turn it over to God and say, help me, Lord. 
help me, Jesus. Yes, I did it, but I feel a girl still trying to come in my mind. Heavenly Father, clean my thinking. Anything that don't line up with you, Heavenly Father, deliver me. Let, let me enter into this temptation. Deliver me from this temptation that don't want me to have a forgiving heart. And if you believe that he will, he will in the name of Jesus. Today, I want you to know you already have a forgiving heart by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. So, well established, you already have a forgiving heart because of the Holy Spirit that lives in you, which is your new nature. Okay, so, but grab it. Hold on to it. Believe it. Say to yourself, I have a forgiving heart through the power of the Holy Spirit because I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe in his Father, God, in the name of Jesus. So you already have that. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you do have the mind of Christ. So you got to know, not think. You got to know that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are, you are, you've been recreated in Christ Jesus. You're not who you used to be anymore. And when the old person try to tell you, or some of your mind try to tell you that you still the same old person, knock it down and say, no, I'm not. I am a new person in Christ Jesus, and I have a forgiving heart. And I'm going to allow my forgiving heart to work in my life. I'm going to forgive anyone that wrongs me. I'm going to forgive them today. Anyone that trespasses against me, I'm going to release them from the wrong that they have done from me. And I'm not going to hold on to bitterness anger and frustration and depression and stress because I don't want to let my forgiving heart work. But when I learn how to forgive, then I know that I release myself from evil too. And I know I release myself from stress and frustration and anger and binging thoughts and how to get evil with people. All these things leave me when I truthfully work out of my forgiving heart. So this new creation that I am in Christ Jesus Jesus, which is this forgiving heart that I have, now I will give it power over me and I will work on forgiveness. And then you have to understand, uh, you really got to understand now you do have the mind of Christ. The reason why you have the mind of Christ, because you have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. And because you got the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, that means you got the mind of Christ in you. Because you got to understand that your mind is spirit, not physical. So with the spirit, you are connected with Christ. So you got the mind of Christ in you now because you are a new creation in your spirit. So you do now have the mind of Christ. You are not who you used to be. You're not stuck on that old mindset, you understand? Now you have this new mindset. You got to understand this new mindset that you have in Christ Jesus. And when you got this new mindset in Christ Jesus, I want you to know that you have a forgiving heart. I want you to know that you have a forgiving heart. You're not looking for a forgiving heart. You already have the forgiving heart. Now you got to develop the, the, the forgiving heart as you live this Christian life in the name of Jesus. Then you work on forgiving people for wronging you. You work on it. You work on forgiving people. Then you must operate out of the mind of Christ. So in order to operate out the mind of Christ, I mean, you got to operate out of the new covenant. And the new covenant said, be forgiven. So if you want to operate out the mind of Christ, I mean, you got to have a forgiving heart. And then, you know, right now, let's go to some Bible verses. Let me enlighten you to some Bible verses. Uh, first, go with me to Luke 23, 34. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus, because this is Jesus speaking in here. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Give Jesus some praise today for the forgiving heart that he has given you. Lift him up in the name of Jesus and know, and know for yourself 
that you have a heart like Jesus. Now Jesus got a forgiving heart. In this first verse, it's going to show you what he said to his father. And he's going to show you his forgiving heart. In Luke 23, 34, he said, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's the only part of the verse I want. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So Jesus was forgiving them and in turn, he asked his father to forgive them for they know not what they do. And then he said what they do and they ignorant to it. They ignorant to what they doing. They don't even know what they doing. But he said, forgive them. See, sometime in life, you're going to run into something similar to that. People is going to be messing with you and doing things crazy to you. And it's going to bother you. And you got to say, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they doing. Because they think like the world. They don't know it. They don't even know it's wrong sometimes when they doing wrong. So you have to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But at the same time that you say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. At the same time, you got to be forgiving them too, for they know not what they do in the name of Jesus. If you can catch a grasp to that, you can start working out a forgiving heart. Because a lot of times when people do things, they don't even know why they do it. But it's the sin in them. It's the evil in them. They have no control of it. So you have to say, I forgive them. For they know not what they do. So then you take it to the Father. After you forgive them, you say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Bless their wonderful name, Jesus. See, that's how you develop a forgiving heart. See, you, in order to develop a forgiveness heart, thank you, Jesus. You got to work on forgiving you got to work on forgiving. See, I know a lot of people don't want to work on forgiving. They would rather work on revenge. They would rather work out of hatred. I'm talking about believers, too. So I'm saying some of you believers, you got to change your attitude. You got to work on a forgiving heart. If you're going to be the light of this world, if you're going to represent Jesus Christ, as the Bible says, you are the ambassador of Jesus Christ. If you're going to do that, guess what? you got to have a forgiving heart. And the part about it, God already then gave you a, begin, a forgiving heart, but the problem with it is you won't work out of the forgiving heart that he had given you. you got to work out to get the forgiving heart that God has forgiven you. So, sometimes people are going to do wrong to you, and they don't even know they're doing wrong to you. But you have to forgive them for the wrong that they do. And then ask God to forgive them too. In the name of Jesus. See, if we're going to have the mind like Christ, we got to respond like Christ. And that's an insight he just gave me. So, Father, let's forgive them for what they do. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do today. And as you forgive them, I forgive them too. Because they know not what they do. So we have to recognize sometimes that people don't even know when they're doing wrong to you. In the name of Jesus. We have to recognize that and we have to forgive them. And when we forgive them, we can ask the Father to forgive them too in the name of Jesus. Now go with me to Matthew 6, verse 12. Matthew 6, verse 12. Matthew 6, verse 12 say, and forgive, it say us, but I'm going to say me. And forgive me, it say that's, but I'm going to say trespassing. It says, forgive me, oh, I, just let me read the verse. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So, I'm going to paraphrase this to another way. And I hope you grasp it. And it said, Father, forgive me my trespasses for my wrong. Forgive me my wrong as we forgive as I forgive the one that wronged me. As I forgive the one that wrongs me. So now you're going to the Father. See, you know what? You're going to the Father and you're asking the Father for forgiveness. 
So the Father going to forgive you. He said, and forgive me for the wrong, for the trespasses and the wrongs that I've done. As you forgive, as I forgive my trespasses. So Jesus is saying in this Lord's prayers right here, you can ask the Father to forgive you for the wrong you has done. And then at the same time, he's saying, you're telling the Father that you're going to forgive the others for the wrongs they have done you. Now, you got to honor your word. you got to respect God and you got to love God. So therefore, you got to have a forgiving heart. While God's forgiving you, you forgiving others. You asking God to forgive you and you said you're going to forgive others. That's what you're saying right there. That's how you develop a forgiving heart. So you got to honor God. Remember what you're doing this for. It's not for your selfish motive, but it's in respect and honor of God and Jesus that you forgive others. It's out of the respect for God and Jesus that you forgive others. And when you forgive others, you help yourself out. And when you ask God to forgive you and he forgive you, he's looking for you to forgive others as well. So you're going to honor God and Jesus by forgiving others in the name of Jesus. And when you get that concept set down in your mind, in your mind and in your heart, then that will help you develop a forgiving heart. See, I'm telling you how to develop a forgiving heart. See, you already have a forgiving heart, but you don't know how to operate out of the forgiving heart that you got. So today, I'm teaching you how to operate out of the forgiving heart that you have already. And I can say thank you, Jesus, for making me a messenger able to bring this message to you because it's only by his grace and his mercy and his kindness and his goodness that I'm able to do this through the power that he placed in me that's by his Holy Spirit, which is my teacher which is my teacher. And then we go to verse 14 and 15. Still in Matthew 6, you go to verse 14 and 15. It said, For if you forgive man their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So we just read up where you ask God to forgive you your trespass, and as you forgive others your trespasses. So we already know that you're forgiving others their trespasses. For but if you forgive not man their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Hey, playing today, some people try to clean it up and say, well, it ain't happened yet. Well, I'm going to tell you something. God will forgive you for your trespasses. But you also got to forgive other their trespasses. Because we are believers in Jesus Christ. And we believe in doing things right. Whether if you're saved, whether if you're going to heaven, that's between you and God. But the way that he wants you to operate, I'm going to bring it to you. So I got to teach the truth. I'm not going to try to switch it to fit you or mold you or shape you. I'm just going to tell it. I'm just going to bring it like it is in the name of Jesus. If you want somebody to compromise with you, you got the wrong one. I don't compromise God's word. This is what it says. And I'm going to do this translation. For if you forgive people their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Now, he said, if you forgive people their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you your trespasses in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to show you something in the name of Jesus, okay? And then it goes on. See, this is kind of self-explanatory. Then it goes on and say, but if you forgive not man their trespasses, so he's saying, if you don't forgive man their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. He said, if you don't forgive people their trespasses, your father's not going to forgive you your trespasses. So the best thing I can tell you is forgive people their trespasses. I'm not going to clean it up. If you want God to forgive you of your trespasses, you got to work on forgiving people of their trespasses that they've done to you. So you have to go back to the verse. To the prayer, if you don't, you got to go back to the Lord's prayer and understand what you are saying. You said, for, for if I forgive man, no, no, 12, and, for, and forgive us. Then you say, God, forgive me my trespasses or my debt as we forgive others their trespasses or their debt. So otherwise, you say, look here, God, I'm in harmony with you with 14 and 15. I'm in harmony with you with Matthew 6, 14 and 15 because Matthew 12 support it. Matthew 6, 12 supported. See, because you saying, God, I'm going to forgive people their trespasses. God, forgive me my trespasses as, 
as I forgive them that trespass against me. And then Jesus went on and broke it down a little farther. He said, but if you forgive not man their trespass, no, he broke down a little farther, but he said, for if you forgive man's their trespass or people their trespass, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So he's saying, you got you got, you got to do this in the name of Jesus in order for it to work. But if you forgive not man their trespass, neither will your father forgive your trespass. So if you don't give man your trespasses, then God will going to give you your trespasses. So I'm just telling you, you got to work on forgiveness. And you already got to, and you already got the forgiving heart in you. So now you need to let that forgiving heart work out of you in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to try to clean it up and say, oh, no, he's still going to forgive. I'm going to say God is a forgiving God, true enough. But he did say, look at here. You are the light of the world, and I expect you to forgive the other people that trespassing. And the honor of God, and the love for God, not out of commandment, but out of the love. See, so everything about God got to work out of love and faith. Out of faith and love that you in respect that you have for God, you should be forgiving others for trespassing against you, as God forgive you for trespassing against Him. Because we are not perfect, so He constantly forgives us. Us. He forgive us all the way up to our complete salvation. He forgive us. Now you're supposed to work on forgiving others the same way at all times, whether you want to or not, in the name of Jesus. So you got to develop that forgiving heart out of love and respect for God and Jesus. It's not about you. Because if you try to do it about you, guess what? You're not going to be able to work on forgiving others. But it's got to be done out of love and respect for God and Jesus. You got to do it for God and Jesus. It's not about you. It's about them. And because you do it out of for God and Jesus, in turn, you receive the grace of God working in your life. See, the grace of God can only work in your life by being obedient to the word of God. See, if you're not obedient to the word of God, the grace can't work in your life because then you're working out of evil. You're not working out of the grace that he has given you. See, in the new covenant is grace. So you got to let that grace work in your life. And when that grace work in your life, you will have a forgiving heart. You will have a forgiving heart. Now go with me to Matthew 5.44. Matthew 5.44. This is how you work on a forgiving heart too. Jesus said, But I say unto you, love your enemies. In order to have a forgiving heart, you got to learn how to love your enemies. Okay? Bless them that curse you. So he said, give them some gifts that curse you. Be righteous with them. Be good with them that curse you. Then he said, do good to them. He said, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. He said, even though they hate you, he said, still be kind to them. He said, still be respectful to them. He said, still be good to them. And then he said, and pray for them which despisefully use you, people that despisefully, strongly use you, and persecute you. He said, pray for them. Pray for them. And when you work out of what he said right there, you're working out of your forgiving heart. You're working out of your forgiving heart. I wasn't going to go in more detail to explain it, but I just read, I'll just tell you a little bit what I said. Live in love. Give gifts to others. Do good to people who hate you and hassle you, and make fun of you, and persecute you. That's what he asked us for out of Matthew 5.44. Now let me read Ephesians 4, 24-27, 31-32. We're not going to explanation because of time. I don't like my videos to be too long, but I hope this be a blessing. But you can always go back and read them again and study up on them. Ephesians 4, 24-27, Ephesians 4, 24-27, and it said, And that you put on the new person, that you put on the new man, which at the God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Understand that you've been created in righteousness and holiness. That's the new man. Wherefore, putting away lying, that means you don't go around lying, Speak every man the truth, put his neighbor, that means be honest, don't be lying, for we are members one of another. He's talking about brothers and sisters in the Lord. Then he said, be ye angry 
and sin not. So he said, be forgiven right there. You got to be sincere and sin not. Let not the sun go up on your, on your raft. And he said, you got to let that anger go. Neither give place to the devil. See, if you hold on to anger and if you hold on to an unforgiving heart, you are giving place to the devil. So if you don't want to give place to the devil, you got to work out, you got to work out your, you got to work out of your forgiving heart that you have received from God through the power of his Holy Spirit. Then go down to 31. Yes, then go down to 31. Then it said, let all bitterness, you got to let all bitterness and wrath, and wrath here is vengeance, and let all vengeance and anger and glamour, and glamour is dealing more with a loud outburst of arguing, complaining, etc. You got to let all that go, glamour, and evil speaking, evil speaking, be put away from, put away from you with all malice, with all malice, with all evil desires or hatred. So you understand. And if you work on these things and you read these things and go over them again in the verse Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 24 through 27, 31 and 32, you will find out that there will be a blessing in your life and it will help you to develop a forgiving heart. So I hope this message was a blessing to you on how to develop a forgiving heart. Hey. I love Jesus. I love God and I love the Holy Spirit and I love the Word of God because, boy, do it do some work inside of me. And if I know it works in me, I know it works in you. So be blessed in the name of Jesus. Continue to always be blessed in the name of Jesus. I hope this message was a blessing. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to go there and subscribe and check out some videos or invite a neighbor or a friend over to my YouTube channel or have them come on the Facebook to my page, you understand, and check out the videos that I got there that may help them to grow in the name of Jesus because I am a messenger of Jesus Christ. And as you know, I'm on Twitter. Feel free to go to my page on Twitter and check me out there too because God is good all the time. God is good. Let God be the head of your life. Let his son Jesus Christ be the head of your life because God is the head of Jesus. God is the source of Jesus and Jesus is the source to us. And that's how come we got the source in. It's called the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. I love you all. Be blessed. Have a blessed week. I hope to be here next week to have a message for you. It's, it's God's will. I will be here in the name of Jesus. I hope this message touch you and bless you. And I love you and God love you always and forever.